Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We talk at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night. Archons transported most of the Cordery in one car, while Wynn was forced to ride alone with Justicar Lucinda. The Cordery shared a tense ride after all that had been revealed. Meanwhile, Lucinda forced Wynn into a blood bond and used Elder Disciplines to implant a secret mission into the Gangle's mind. Should Miles survive the Siege of New Haven, he was to be destroyed. short order, two SUVs arrive to the estate that belongs to Roman Pendragon. The grounds is secured by visible stationed guards. They are clad in black gear, armored up, bearing arms, and all of them recognized by Neil's perceptions, are kindred. In all, there are two dozen such guards spread about, which Neil will recognize with a quick head count. The gate is closed behind you in this parking space that, that Prince Pendragon possesses. There is a helicopter that has landed, had to have arrived only a few minutes before the group of you did and having already emerged from it and in the midst of being escorted inside the group of you recognize Jan Peterson from the vehicles emerge the various archons that are escorting you along with the Justicar, her power Lucinde and her newest archon Archon Cabot. Everyone forms up, stepping outside to greet the new arrivals, is Roman Pendragon, clad in this very dark gray, almost black suit. And at his side, a vampire who is wearing a leather jacket and sunglasses. His hair is tied back into a ponytail. He's got this athletic but weaselly look about him. And for those who have seen him before, you recognize Roman's child, the Bruja Sirk. Roman approaches him and Jan Peterson shake hands. Him and Justicar Lucinde shake hands. And Miles, he approaches you to shake hands. I move forward after disembarking the crew and meeting all those the that it came out to greet us, and I will move forward and shake Prince Prendagrin's hand. The group of you are, of course, granted my hospitality. And steps have been taken to ensure your comfort during your stay. The meeting is not expected to last longer than three nights, and thus you are granted hospitality for three nights. Sleeping arrangements have been made. Refreshments are ready for you in your private spaces. Please, come in. A good portion of this meeting and those who are to be attending it will not be arriving until early tomorrow night. You will have the evening to yourselves. The group is welcomed in. There are gold servants who are present who offer any changes of clothes, any... Uh, you know, refreshments in terms of cigarettes. If anyone needs to feed, they do offer themselves in the form of sustenance. Since the car 
parked. Britta's had a strange emotional state about her. The comparison of the terror of first arriving here and the whirlwind that happened ever since. It is all brought to mind in that moment. And stepping forward, she finds herself trying to find the safe spaces in the ground where she knows there might not be gorgeous art, following shoes of ghouls, and taking stock of herself, how she moves within the space. But she knows that hunger is going to be an important thing to manage in these nights. So she will accept the offer of some ghouls to heal herself and take some blood. You are brought to the smoking room so that you can do that. And again, for those of you who do gaze upon these spaces, they are filled with art. Everything is perfectly placed. The silver, the gold, everything shines immaculately. The chandeliers produce perfect twinkling lights cascaded across the spaces that you walk. For those of us who have not been to Roman Pendragon's estate, everything is beautiful, immaculate, and in place. Definitely a trap for Toriador. What's the impression the Bruja, like Johnny, gets in this place? Old money. You get the impression that this dude has been wealthy and influential for centuries. It's not like... Like with Miles, he has a very modern look to a lot of his stuff. He likes the bright, fancy cars. That's not really where the money was put here. Here, you're looking at like, you know, 300, 400 year old paintings and these massive like golden frames, etc., etc. There's much more of an interest in like fine arts and the kind of classic decor that a very upscale home in England would have. Like, this is like a, like a noble's estate. And I think there's a lot of war memorabilia and related art. Something from Carthage? That's a little further in, but mm. uh, there is a point where there are artifacts from, like, Carthage that are kept under glass, able to be, like, viewed but not touched. Is that the only kind of artifacts that he has under glass? He's got, like, memorabilia from, like, wars that he probably visited and interacted with, but it's the items from Carthage that are far and away the oldest and clearly the most well, like, tended to. Gotcha. He, it seems like he has a habit of keeping old thing like, relics under glass. Those aren't the only relics under glass, right? Right. Gotcha. As they're led in, uh, particularly as Britta is given blood dolls to feed on, are we all? All of you are offered. I'm, I'm uh, asking only because Roman has a tendency to overlook and forget that I'm even fucking here. So I'm just making sure I also have. <laughs> he spoke to the group of you as a whole. Right. He did not say anything directly to you or gesture for anyone to go to you. So how you wish to interpret it is up to you. I'm only asking because Neil... Because we had to run out to Miles' conclave, uh, Neil has not fed since Johnny fed on him. So he is still starving. Tell so what you do. If there are, if I'm being totally honest, I'm too freaked out, I don't think I would feed unless somebody came up. So there's no way, realistically, that Neil would, like, ask for something for himself right now. So just putting it out there that I, he's hungry, but not, like, anxiety is overriding that. So I'm going to... Get a change of clothes or whatever they have here, because I didn't get a chance before I was summarily summoned. Miles, I do have... I brought a suit from the Haven. Fantastic. And I will attempt to eat what is provided. We'll see how that goes. There are no musicians. Yep. Um, I tried to run back and grab this stuff for court for you guys, but it all happened so fast. So I I'm sure there will be really good stuff here, too. But if you wanted some of your own clothes. Uh, y yeah, that, um, yes, that I, my stuff, p please, would be, I, I trust y you, you to, yeah, p please, 
And Neil kind of like goes towards Britta, like looking for whatever she had. You brought stuff for all of us? Well, it had felt silly, but when we were running, trying to catch up with Miles, I had... I wish I hadn't spent the blood on it, but when and I stopped by to try to make the court appearance go a little better. Your closets? I would appreciate something to get dressed in. Johnny kind of looks down at himself. He's still covered in all of the freaking... Uh, <laughs> all, all of the damage and blood and everything from earlier when we were fighting Vitel. Britta had picked out outfits that would be good for court. They're as quick as she can have picked out outfits in that haphazard situation, but... They're clean. Um, Miles, uh, you think you're going to have any luck here with any of the provided refreshments? Probably not. What about your sire? Maybe maybe he might uh, know where you might be able to, f- to feed? Maybe. I'm, it's on my list to talk to. You guys, I'm going to mingle and talk, present this... Um, yeah, I think that might be for the best. I'll um, I'll look after the rest of the coterie. He glances over towards Wynne, because she's here, right? Wynne arrived with her power. But she's not leaving Lucin's side. Wynne is right? wandering as far as she is able. Wynne is able to go wherever she wants. She's oh. mostly just been leaning against, like, like, a thing in the entryway, like a... Just a place where, like, a calling card dish would be kept or something like that. And she's just kind of been sitting there leaning with her arms crossed. Okay. If Wynn is in here, I'm not even thinking about blood and shit. I probably would not even take the clothes from Britta that, no, Neil would also just kind of, yeah, I'm beelining straight for Wynn. But, yeah, no, I agree. And um, I will catch up and see what I can do later. I'll try and see if I can get to make sure the rest of the coterie's fed, clothed, and we'll get in touch with you yeah i'm gonna go see what's going on um i've got this i've got the cell phone on me now so if you need me ahead of time call gotcha he kind of puts a hand out like grips miles on the shoulder let's see what this battle looks like all right man Good and luck. johnny will um turn to go kind of gather up neil win and, and britta and kind of make sure that they are being fed and clothed um, actually, Br- Brit is off feeding, so I don't need to worry about her at the moment. She's probably out, out of sight, right? You're not just feeding in the main area? Uh, I had been brought to a smoking room. Yeah. And I had uh, chosen to accept the accommodations when they, were, when they were offered. So effectively, someone must have come up and offered, and I would have said yes, thankfully, and you would have seen me head off. Gotcha. So before you, she heads off, uh, Johnny will grab some of the bag or the bag that she has, mm-hmm. presumably with the, with our clothes in it. Yep. Um, and um, we'll head over to meet up with uh, Wynn, where Neil's already, <laughs> you know, making sure she's all right. Mm-hmm. Wynn, is, or Neil will. <laughs> Neil will very easily ascertain without really any effort. Wynn is far from okay. She will just kind of lift her eyes, look at him, and nod it toward the blood dolls. Go eat. Neil ignores all pretense and almost leans on the old Malkavian boon of, like, a oh, weirdo's gonna weirdo, so just ignore it. Walks, like, directly walks qu- silently directly up to win, ignores the head nod and the go feed, and just in the same exact way that she does to everybody else in the coterie, leans his head down puts his forehead against hers and she breaks down your kindred I guess been a willpower for this but in your head the thought in Neil's voice intrudes and just says in that like weirdly less stuttery more confident mental voice that he has I know she's gonna change you I know you're changing but no matter what I know your win. I won't forget. And I won't let you either. I love you, and this is going to be okay. And then he takes his forehead away, and he just wraps her in this, like, fucking stupid gangly hug. And doesn't let go all propriety and pretense left aside. Probably looks awkward as fuck, given the, you know, the, the surroundings that they're in. But he doesn't say anything. 
for all outward appearances, it's silent. Please go eat while I still care whether you do. I know you're always going to care, but you have to eat too. And you got no orders right now, nothing to do. So how about you come join us? Hmm? Maybe? I'm going to get lost in here. I need somebody to... Johnny's the one with good directions. Johnny's kind of standing a little bit away from the two of you, just kind of watching. And he kind of nods at that, like, I do. Um, and I was actually just come over here to say exactly what Neil said. That both of you need to eat. The three of us need to eat. Yeah. And so. uh, we do have some clothes here. I could use a change. Neil, you could definitely get changed. When I don't know if she packed anything for you. I he changed already. All right. We were <laughs> we were thrown down with a Methuselah earlier tonight, so I think everybody could use a bite. Maybe, right? I have no interest in eating right now. I have interest in you eating. And if I have to fucking, here comes the airplane spoon feed you, I will. If you get in the baby Bjorn. Still. Sounds like about when Britta might be able to make her way back to the group. And she hasn't changed, actually. Um... Not yet. Uh, she would have any change that she could have made in time for court, but she's not quite putting herself up for the circumstance at the moment. When you okay for a hug? Oh shit, I should have asked first. I'm not sure, but you're welcome to give one. Britta comes in, gently gives Wynn a hug, and using the sleeve of her own dress, gets the tears out of Wynn's eyes. Cold water, hydrogen peroxide. It's okay. I'm sure I can find something. There's plenty for me to change into. You guys have to find a way to kill me. No. Nope. Don't let me go on like this. Nope. Pick one. Option three. Yeah, either kill me or get me out of this. That's two. I, I pick, know. I pick three. Sorry, man. What's three? Neil looks around at the surroundings, gives a big, awkward, gangly shrug, and doesn't say anything else. That whole talk about existing and surviving, I don't want to just exist. I know. And the whole conversation we had about, you know, following each other down the spiral, I, um, I meant that too. So, I... Well, then keep me with you then, but get me out of this. We're going to get you out of this. Give us the time to figure out exactly... We don't have it. And if I say more than that... It's okay. When? I... I'm not going to stop looking up. My dress? No. I... When kind of like... You're still you. <laughs> yeah, she kind of like... She looks a little confused for a minute that she was allowed to be d dirty and seems a little more comfortable. You're still you. No matter what, you're always still you. And I'm not going to give up on that, okay? No matter where it takes us. I need a bathroom. Do I remember where they are? You do. Come with me. Do we have to travel in packs? You know where the bathrooms are in here? She got the advanced tour, remember? No, how about just at least pairs? Yeah, that's probably smart. You go with Britta, I'll make sure Neil gets fed, too. He'd probably like the pancakes if he can get them in that form. Hmm. And she'll follow Britta. I'd make you pancakes, Neil, but somehow I think that uh, Pendragon's the type that doesn't keep pancake materials around. He doesn't seem like a pancake kind of guy. Yeah, maybe just blood for now. So I can keep my wits about me. Best I can. You too. You look you look like you're not uh you look like you're handling your beast pretty well, but it looks like it's shaking the bars of the cage. It's always been quieter than most, but I don't want to test it right now. Alright. We'll find some spot to get cleaned up and fed. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Okay. And Neil follows Johnny. So the two of us will go. The group of you are directed to a room 
There are four people uh, waiting for you. They look like club goers and seem pretty, like, fucking jazzed up for the party. And they start bringing up all these, like, things about, like, the Hartford club scene that you have no idea about. But are essentially prey that has been corralled here and is waiting for you. Four young women, fishnets, boots, black skirts, piles and piles of mascara, like, just ready for, like, the after party and thrilled to be there. When the two of you enter the room, Neil, you hear this? There's the softest click of a lock behind you, just in case they try to escape. Neil habitually feeds on the sleeping because he is not good at and is uncomfortable with this kind of confrontation. But he's also really inhumanly hungry. And he at first pats around in his pockets just to see if there's anything left, but the last of the Caliph went with Wynn on a rooftop not that long ago. So he goes, hey, hey, um, anybody have any drugs? One who's chewing bubblegum emits a popping noise and she goes through her purse and she pulls out these like tabs and you see just these brightly colored little things and she kind of shakes it like doggy treats to a pet (laughs) neil will go over sort of playing that manipulative role of like the slightly too over eager guy at the club uh yeah let's do it what do you think roll me a manipulation subterfuge to get her comfortable with you going near her. Because, um... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because I, uh, you know, this is... Oh, new to me. I'm a little nervous. And, um... Lex, does my new manipulation spec apply? What is it? Fast talk. It sure does. I should rolled... Okay, I got five successes. Manipulation... She up to it. You're kind of a weird guy, but she's curious. Manipulation subterfuge. A weirdly decent role for Neil. Emotional manipulation, not something he's terrible at. Particularly when he starts to play up the like, oh, I'm just a little guy thing. And as they start to do drugs, having no impact on Neil because he's just like, tabs don't do anything in his mouth unless they're fucking weird somehow. Well, she takes plenty herself. Then Neil will feed and try and turn this basically into a drugged out after party. At least this half of the room. Johnny, what's going on in your end? Johnny kind of sighs at what, what he's been left in the room. And what explain the room a little bit. It's, uh you know, about the average size of like an American bedroom. There's like a chaise lounge and lots of very pretty furniture, paintings on the walls. It's just this private space to socialize or in all likelihood do yeah. exactly this. Is there any like is, is there any like music on in this place or anything like that, or is there a place to p- turn music on? There is a place where one can turn music on. It is not on currently. So yeah, so Johnny just kind of sighs. He he watches Neil um doing his thing, kind of gives a a little bit of a forced smile at the uh, the girls that are looking at him, but is also keenly aware that he has three ag ripped out of the side of his neck. And drain, you know, and that that has also like caused, you know, all kinds of gore to be on his jacket and shirt, and uh, just kind of goes fishing through the bag and grabs some clean clothes. Girls, you're gonna have to pardon me. I uh, I need to get cleaned up. He points to his neck. Why don't you go turn some music on or something? Uh, enjoy hanging out with Neil there, and you know, just relax. And he kind of goes walking off to where the bathroom is. There's like a click at the door when you're stepping out and it's open for you. And one of the servants just allows you to head off. Oh, so it's only one. En- There's no bathroom in here and it's just one, entr- one entrance in. Yep. It's like a it's like a cell. Yeah. Johnny will spend a point of willpower. By the way, his last point of willpower and five blood to heal a point of ag. You spend a heal. 
How much does that bring you down to? So I actually filled up on Miles' ghouls. So I'm at eight blood now. Okay. He'll get to the bathroom and just kind of sit there for a while, looking in the mirror. I mean, these girls are young, right? Early 20s. Yeah. Not terribly dissimilar from Bretta. Yeah. Or at this point, not terribly dissimilar from Jessica. That'd be right. Johnny will, like, strip off all the bloody clothes and light up a Morley. And before he's, like, healed up, he's, because I imagine the, the, the hot process of healing the ag takes a little bit. It does. Um, it actually largely happens during the day. Right. But, like, forcing it this way, like, is, is particular. So he's kind of watching, you know, some of the smoke drifting up out of his neck. And he takes the ruined shirt that he had and he rinses that down and starts kind of cleaning up all the blood off of himself and, and trying, to, trying to force the healing to make the wound look more presentable in a way where a mortal might not look at that and go, oh shit, you need to go to the ER. And more like, okay, yeah, you got fucked up, but you're okay now. So he focuses on most mostly superficial healing of the wound. Okay. And after he's kind of cleaned himself up for the most part, he um, dresses in the clothes that Britta got, inspects his leather jacket, does a once-over with that to make sure that's presentable. I guess he, he just tosses his, uh, his ruined clothes in, like, the trash in the bathroom. But then thinks better of it because there's blood all over that, and that's his blood. And we're kind of in the den of enemies. So he'll take the bloody bag of clothes in the garbage bag and just haul that up out of there. Just, I imagine a small little bathroom yep. garbage, right? Little bag. Until uh, exit. Um, are there any servants around or anything like that? Yes. Where are my quarters? Right this way. F- follow. You are brought to a room. It looks like there is one bed that is arranged there. So you'll be rooming with one person. And it is a very nice open floor space with... Just this, again, gorgeous, gorgeous decor. This has its own bathroom. There's a view of this, like, courtyard outside. Johnny kind of, like, looks over the whole area, nods a little bit, and we'll put the uh, the bag with his stuff next to, like, in one of the closets of this room um, and head back out. Is the servant still just waiting there or anything like that? Just a little down the hall. Okay. Like, you're given privacy but okay. he's on standby shuts the quarters and kind of like the, gives a mental map for himself where everything is and we'll head back to the room where neil is okay when johnny gets back to the room where neil is neil is sort of sitting on like one of the couches near a table and has pushed a bunch of stuff to the side and has laid out a bunch of little objects there is pretty clearly blood around his lips uh and like all his sort of lank hair is like hanging low around his face and he's got this really unusual kind of unusual for neil like i don't want to say full cult leader vibe but like (laughs) he's giving off predatory air in a way he usually does not and he's looking at somebody who uh some one of the other people in the room and just almost weirdly confidently compared to just a few minutes ago is like yeah, tell me your uh, tell me your birthday. I I can do horoscopes and tarot readings and stuff. What's your What's your sign? I can. In a way, you've seen him do that shit before, and you know he at least whether or not you believed in the blood magic, you knew he was real about it. Mm-hmm. But he apparently is just using that to spin a like, yeah, no. What's up, horoscope kids? You want to know after having fed a little bit. Of the the four the four girls in the room, are any of them like passed out or anything like that, or like no? Uh, Lex, Neil was only going to take two from any given individuals, um, depending on who he could sort of parlay access to. I believe I said there was four in there. There was four. You can take up to eight that way. He would have taken two because assuming Johnny was coming back from the bathroom, which two from each does not put him up to full. Three from each would not put him up to full. But like somewhere in there, he's still Neil. He's not like. Making anybody pass out. You good near Neil? Yeah, I think so. Just uh, doing horse, uh, horoscopes and stuff, you know. So, 
Okay. All right. Girls, I'm going to leave you here with my friend Neil. Take good care of him, please. He gives them kind of like a winning smile. Um, You're not sticking around? No. Tony? No, I'm, I'm, I'm all set. Aren't we supposed to two by two? Yeah, I'm not going to be very far. He gives him a reassuring nod. He's also, uh, we got to get rid of those clothes, too, I think. They're, uh, they look pretty ruined. Girls, if, if you want, there's some uh, clothes in that bag for him. Just make, make sure he gets dressed at some point I'm gonna properly. I'm going to get dressed to my own. I don't want to. I don't. That just broke him. That yeah. break, Whatever zone Neil was in breaks immediately, and he just stands up. He's like, actually, I, we, we, maybe, maybe we're good, actually. We're gonna, I, um. uh, all right, then. Then I'll, I'll just leave these in your quarters. Um, he uh, grabs the he grabs the bag, but yeah. you you you're if you if you're giving zodiacs you give these girls the zodiac. Um, okay. And he puts a hand on your chest and kind of like keeps you in that room, and okay. then we'll head out the door. I'm assuming I walk past the servant again who locks the door after I walk out. Yep. Johnny gives him a glare, and we'll move to like a bench somewhere in view of the door of this room. Sit and just start to chain smoke Morley's. When Britta says that she knows where a bathroom might be, Wynn is very purposely heading in that direction with her. It doesn't make sense to pass her, but she kind of puts an urgency in Britta's step by how close she's hanging. And when they get to the bathroom, there's no standing on ceremony. Wynn just kind of grabs her by the shirt and pulls her into the bathroom with her and shuts the door and locks when? it. Wynn does this and Britta is a little thrown off. She trusts Wynn. There's no major hesitation, but she definitely freezes. Wynn doesn't seem to regard her words. Uh, her first thought immediately. Wynn has the presence of mind to lift both toilet lids like she's thrown up hastily in a bathroom before. And she crouches down and just vomits blood into the toilet. Oh, Wynn, are you okay? Britta kneels down next to Wynne, immediately looking to grab the braid and make sure her hair is away from her face and set a hand on her shoulder. Wynne coughs a couple times, spits, doesn't turn her face from the toilet bowl, just kind of leans an elbow on it and rests her forehead on her own bicep. Are you sick? Can, can we get sick? No. Or I, um... I just didn't, it's not going to change anything, but I didn't want it, her in me anymore. I don't even know if this can do it, but but I just needed to make that happen. What do you mean? Did, did the Jessica already? Yeah. I'm sorry. I know, um, I don't know if you know what that's like yet, but I don't know if you've had it happen before. We've, you've saw what, what it was like for me, and I'm sorry that you're going through it. Wynn just kind of thinks for a minute and, and is quiet. But that won't work, right? That won't unblood bond you? No. There's no reason it should. It happened before I even swallowed it. Just the taste. Yeah. And Wynne is quiet and just kind of rests her head and after a minute kind of puts her other elbow on the toilet bowl and laces her fingers behind her head. Not like she's hiding, but just almost trying to keep her head on straight. When Wynne moves her hands, Britta tries to slide her hands down, try to trace a small circle on Wynne's shoulder, the same way that you would comfort someone who is nauseous. Remember your first night, how I dragged you into the bathroom and told you how it was? Yeah, I remember. It, um, I know I've said it before, Wynn, but that's always meant a lot to me. Wynn kind of gives a nod as much as she can with her head held in her arms and turns her face just enough so that her eagle-colored eyes can find Britta's. Okay, repay the favor. How am I going to get through this? 
Britta kind of settles forwards, making sure to make eye contact with Wynne, struggling to find the words. It's taking... There's so much I need to tell you all, and I want to say it to you before... It's just a memory of a feeling. I want to say it to you guys while I'm feeling it, and I don't know if I can get it all in. Is it something that you could say to me now? Words aren't adequate. Is it something that Neil or me could help with? I don't know that... I don't know that it would hurt anything. You can certainly try. Neil's done it. Look, I... I don't know what you need to say to me, but I do know you. And I know you're asking me to tell you how you can get through it, and... I don't know the details, but I do know that you're one of the strongest people I know, and that's not just because I don't remember a lot. You've always been someone with so much integrity when and so much heart and I know that that's been really difficult for you it's been difficult for all of us but you I can't imagine a world where you don't hold on to your sense of self I feel like that's one of the you you as a person you are so true to yourself, and I know that scares you, because sometimes you feel like you can't be or like you're scared for us, but you can make it win, and we'll be there with you the whole time, we'll help you, the whole coterie. When seems like she wants to say something about that. And decides not to. And just kind of taps her forehead. Telling Britta to just take the plunge. Britta will spend a willpower to use telepathy to try to pull a thought out of Wynne. Can I just relent to her telepathying into my brain? Yeah. Okay. And Wynne just lets that happen. What is the thought that I am able to pluck from your surface? Wynne has seemed to cram so much. And Lex, you tell me how much of this gets through. It's not a thought so much as a cocktail of emotions. Chief among them is pride in Britta and how in how much she has grown and how much she has endured and how much she has become such an incredible person. There is compassion for all she has endured hope that maybe the Camarilla will be okay because Britta is here incredulity at her intellect and her quiet strength and sense of self and just sheer love for a sister, a child a dearest friend Gratitude for the opportunity to have been a part of this incredible person's life. Britta's hand goes still on Wynne's back, and those big eyes on Britta widen. A trace of tears that she's trying to hold back. She tries to take Wynne by the shoulder. It's such a gentle touch, but it's almost in the way that you would shake someone. Wynne, why does it feel like you're saying goodbye? Because I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And I don't want to never see you again with anything left unsaid. That's the basis of every tragedy that's ever been written, is all the things you didn't get to say. Well, I don't think that's true. Because, look, I'm grateful that you think that of me. I, I really am. It means more than I can say. Britta, I want you to understand... I am not saying this with the intent of saying goodbye. I plan to be here as long as I can be. But that's the thing. You're talking like you're going to disappear, and I don't think that's true. I don't think that there's anything that you wouldn't be able to say that would change things, that would change how much 
you're a part of our family that would change how much I love you. It's just, it won't change you. It might change me. And I don't know how this addiction to another person works. I don't know that you will ever be as important to me again as you are right now while I am still me. And I want you to know that without the filter of this artificial connection and need for another person. Look, I've been through that. And I felt what it was like to have the next night's step two. And I'm sorry, I don't know a way to get you out of the second step of blood bonding, but I, I know what it feels like. And if it's any comfort, it never made me change how I felt about you. When I thought about the coterie, even though there was that part of my mind that was poisoned to... I mean, sometimes it's so confusing, sometimes it still feels like... Like I lost someone I loved, or... It, it, I don't... I've heard that it all breaks differently for different people, but the point is... Maybe the bond could change something, but we all know who you are. And we all know who you are to us. You're someone who is brave and unrelenting, and you keep hold of yourself. You're so intelligent, and... Frankly, look, I get that it's all a political play in the end, but Camarilla would be pretty stupid to pick anyone else to be Archon. So then that's how I get through it. Is you guys. I think you could get through it on your own if you had to. I think you could get through anything. But I know that we'll be there for you. I hope I'm still there for you. And she just kind of turns and bear hugs Britta. She's not careful. She might tackle her. Uh, when, but. <laughs> when Britta does hug back, it's a deep hug. She definitely takes the opportunity to like nestle in and give Wynn as much comfort as she can because they're not going to have a lot more time. Wynn just holds on like she never wants to let go. At a certain point, Britta will wriggle out just a little bit. Wynn will let her go. I need you to take this. Britta shows Wynn the end of her sleeve. If you could just rip it at the elbow, I I don't want anyone else to have your blood. Wynn nods and kind of uses her claw to work a hole in and rips along the grain like she's done this a million times. When you're ready, I'm going to check where um, I'm staying, but... I have a guess. Yeah. Um. Did you feed? No. You just... I know how you feel that you had to get that blood out of your system, Yeah, but... I didn't want to feed before I got it out. Okay. Are you ready to? Yeah. Good. No good to you guys on an empty tank, am I? I'm honestly, um, kind of empty, so with all the healing that I need to do, it's, yeah, it's going to be rough. Well, then let's go get a snack. How hungry are you? I say snack, but I think I mean buffet. Like, all you can eat. I've, I've already got some blood, I don't know. I can come with you, but I want you to feed too. You might need it more. Okay. And when stands up, flushes the toilet, knowing that she just sent the Justicar's blood into the sewer, not particularly caring, and kind of takes a minute at the mirror to clean herself up. But um, is there to help? Even if it's just something as simple as like straightening what Wynn's wearing and little details. Am I going to need a personal stylist for this? Do you want a job? <laughs> uh, honestly, I think that I know I brought some of the clothes that we had to court, but if we can take what we're given, it's a sign of goodwill, too. So what we have is back up, and you were made Archon for who you are, and you are going to have to have times where Maybe that agreement I, we made. Maybe Sorry. you're good. 
maybe that agreement we made where I get to dress you up sometime will come into play. But for now, you are who you are. I don't think they're expecting anything else. I think there's a lot about me they're not expecting. I think that's true. How could they ever know? And when we'll unlock the door and kind of take Britta by the hand and go out. When walks out of the bathroom with Britta and she just kind of like looks around for a minute, just pick a direction and maybe there will be food there. Um, she'll look to Britta. It, is there like a space where he keeps people to feed on? If you ask one of his people, um, I thought I saw Neil walk a different direction than I walked. All right. Um, let's let's try that way then. And she's kind of letting Britta show her around, but making it look like she's still in control. But she's definitely letting Britta lead the directions. Britta is looking for one of the servants in the house to ask where one should feed. Britta arrives to one door. And finds very quickly, this is probably not the room to enter. Because there are the sounds of a heated discussion taking place. And the heated discussion seems to be a sort of... Do you sign senses to get uh, more details or not? Yes, I'd like to use... uh, I'd like to heighten my senses... If I'm kind of catching on that there's something going on. So heightened senses helps you hear one of the two voices that are going back and forth. And it becomes clear that there's some sort of meeting, board meeting, some sort of discussion happening where one of these parties is speaking over a phone. And the other voice you recognize to be the voice of Miles' sire. And... Whatever they're saying is emotional. And when you tune back in, when you hear, you start to make out a handful of words. The name New York comes up repeatedly. A thing is being referred to as the Zantosa case. And whatever has been said has Jan Peter Zun frustrated and angry to the point where you can hear that he is at the edge of a frenzy. And then the line disconnects and you hear almost the stomping footsteps of someone heading towards the door. Britta has surreptitiously slipped her arm inside of Wynn's to look to another door. Wynn kind of just waits to see what Britta's plan is. Um, She sometimes does see and hear things and Wynn is always kind of on guard for okay is she actively listening or has she gotten entranced by the wallpaper Britta's plan is to make it look like they were on their way somewhere else she as soon as she can hear that first angry footstep of movement she is looking to take Wynn at like we're definitely on task we're looking for food we are not listening in (laughs) Wynn kind of gives a wink like, yes, definitely not doing the thing we were just doing and moves in step with her. <laughs> the door opens. Jan Peterson can be seen exiting and adjusting his cufflinks. He looks deeply frustrated. He runs his fingers through that blonde hair of his and storms off in the other direction, seemingly not suspecting a thing. Britta continues listening to footsteps as she's taking Wynn away and just counting the distance measuring as well as she can how well someone else with the same ability might be able to hear what she's saying if he were to have it. And eventually, she just looks to Wynne and gives a sort of nod that says, that's something to be talked about later. Wynne kind of gives a, yeah, I figured, kind of nod. So food? Let's get you full or something. Something would be better than nothing at this point, yeah. And the plan continues to look for someone to direct to win. At the next door, you hear a slight mouth folding, the sounds of feeding. And when you open the door, you find 
a kneel, and a small throng of blood dolls who are gathered for the purposes of being fed on. Walking in that room, Britta's eyes go a little hungrier, but she steps back, getting Wynn through the door first. Wynn kind of seems a little surprised that Neil is here. As far as she knows, this is not his M.O. when it comes to feeding, and he kind of looks like he's been sucking on Tootsie Pops for a while, just the cherry flavored ones, so his lips are all red and Kool-Aid mustache And other than that, she kind of looks for the first blood doll that looks like it hasn't been fed on, isn't like drooping, isn't like clearly exhausted. And she just kind of, whether she's taken a lesson from her time in the park, doesn't lead with any conversation. <laughs> <laughs> She just kind of points at the blood doll and gives a questioning thumbs up. She gives a thumbs up. <laughs> Wynn proceeds and feeds on her. <laughs> she goes slightly limp, makes all of the sounds and languid body motions you would expect from someone who's experiencing the kiss. How much do you take? She will take three from that one. After the sort of sudden entrance of his coterie mates Neil looks up yeah mouth covered in blood and looks sated but still that kind of like frantic like his brain's running too hot look in his eyes sees Wynn go after that one woman very clearly on his face does some like quick mental math mm -hmm. nods to himself and then while Wynn is feeding looks at Britta and just points at a couple giving the clear indication of, like, those ones are probably safe. I haven't touched those ones yet. Party's still going? Uh, I, I was, um, I was actually, uh, thinking about heading to, well, I don't know, not bed yet, but I, um, I'm, I'm not, um, it can be. Yeah, I was finishing up myself. Then Britta will approach the couple, slide a glance over to Wynn to check in how she's doing. I could use another. Would it be all right if I give this one a kiss? Fine by me. Make sure it's okay with her. How about you? Kiss me? She gives you an awkward thumbs up having seen the, <laughs> that past interaction. Britta takes her thumb and kisses the pad of the finger and brings her closer. She obeys. Wynn kind of rolls her eyes like, stop being so hot. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she does not say that out loud. <laughs> If she looks untouched, I would take three. Okay, you take three. After she's finished and she licks the wound, she's not trying to be sexy, but she's paying attention to how gross she's being. Rather than just like slopping a kiss, a lick on it to close the wound, she'll be like, okay, maybe let's check how much slobber we're, we're getting on here. Wynn is vaguely behaving and isn't sure what that looks like. Exactly. Once she's closed the wound and kind of gently made sure that the doll is in a comfortable position. Uh, she'll look to Neil. Um, I'd actually like to have a talk. I need to get a little more in me, and then maybe we take a walk before you go to bed. Uh, yeah. Sh sure, one. Did here, or did, did you want to go... Did oh. you, what's the... A walk typically means not here. I'm not here for this, right? You don't have to be. Do you want me to be? I want you guys with me all the time, but this is probably better just a Neil and me conversation. Then I'll figure out about staying here. Okay. And when we'll give her awkward eye contact, pointing at the doll, thumbs up, uh, and she will, she will move to take three from another untouched blood doll. The door clicks open. A woman enters... Britta recognizes her as Roman Pendragon's primary ghoul, Maria. Britta, his grace requires your presence. What are you doing? Let's go. When we'll look at Britta. Like, remember our talk. Neil, when all that happens, stands, like, rapidly with a very similar posture looking at Maria kind of like a kid on a playground where a strange kid shows up to try and take your things. He starts to say something 
looks around the room, stops himself, like, kind of remembering where he is for a second, and just gives Bretta a very piercing, like, do you want us to do something about this look? Totally unself-aware. Bretta has been doing a last check on the blood doll that the kiss sealed up, right? And she looks to win, giving her a little smile and a nod. There's a moment of processing, but her interest is more towards Neil than Maria. And watching the change in Neil, Britta crosses over, gives him a smile, and says, I already got Wen a hug, so you alright with that? What? I don't understand the question. Can I hug you? Oh. Yeah, sure. I'm okay, Why? Neil. Oh. Okay. Britta goes over, squeezes Neil into a hug. Uh, she- let us know when that's not true. I would. She goes over to Maria after. Maria turns and quickly marches out, expecting Breda to follow. Breda follows. Again, eyes still mostly on the floor, watching the way that the, presuming like a short heel clicks, more aware, as always now today, of getting caught in a trance, but pulling herself together. When Buddha leaves, it is just the two of you and the blood dolls. You might want to wipe your face, but do you want to go see if we can find somewhere to sit outside so we can see the stars? I would like that very much, yeah. Let's go do that. And he, like, runs a hand over his mouth and follows Wynn. Wynn kind of takes him by the hand, which is a little weird for them, but Mm -hmm. she does take him by the hand and... She's just kind of wandering through the halls looking for, like, a balcony. And if there's no balcony, is there a back patio or something like that where they can go look at the night sky? There's a whole courtyard. She goes for that, probably finds a spot where they can sit on the bricks but put their feet in the grass and sits down with him. When they sit down, Neil, much like he's done before, when he feels the need to, like, ground himself, uh, takes his shoes off, puts his bare feet in the grass. Wynn is doing something similar. So, I'll be very honest with you, Neil. I don't know how blood bonds work very well beyond what they symbolize. So, I don't know how much I will be authentic in my feelings for all of you. So, I'm trying to get as much in as I can. You'll you'll still care for us. Probably. But you won't be the, as important as you are now. You, We won't be as important as she is. Right. But like I told you, when, when we first got here, I don't care how far you go. I'm going to remember for you. Okay? Always. I won't let you go alone. Neil, I'm sorry. For what? What, what did you... You don't have to apologize I to me. I blood-bound you to me. I know. So did Miles. It was an accident. It wasn't an accident. Well, it, it was, was a choice. It was, and I knew what it meant. And I knew it wasn't right to do it without your permission. And I did it anyway. And you should be mad at me. And I hope you are someday. If I hope it doesn't supersede our friendship. But I do hope that you feel like you can give me a ration of shit for it someday. If you want at least my experience <laughs> to know what it, just a little bit of a bond is like, I can't really be mad at you when. I know. So when someday when I have to be far away from you guys and there's a chance for it to break, I want you to know that it's okay if you're mad. But I also want you to know that I wanted it to be me. Wanted what to be you? I wanted to be... The one you were blood bound to because, Neil, you might be the most important person in my life. And I wanted, if you were going to be bound to someone, I wanted you to be bound to someone who was wanting to keep you safe and respected you exactly for who you are. Kidnappings aside. Never been kidnapped before. Hey, don't bullshit me. I've been missing. Yeah, and one with my permission, which I still regret, but... 
I, um... Neil, you are the only one who knows me for me. Everyone knows me for who I am. You know me for me. And you have kept me me. You have kept me here. And I'm sorry if I can never mean... If you can never mean as much to me as you do right now. When, as, um, as, as far as, as, look, things are the way they are now, and there's not really anything we can do about it. I've been thinking about it all night. I'm going to continue to think about it. I'm going to obsess about it. I know me. I'm at least that self-aware. I'm familiar with your work as well, and I need you to do me a favor. I'm not, I'm not going to stop thinking about it, trying to think of a way out. I don't see one. But that doesn't mean it's not there. But I, I need you to know, okay? I, I said it before, but I need, I need you to know inside. And the way you're talking right now, I know you don't know it inside yet. So I need you to hear me. You're not going into the dark alone, okay? I'm never in I the dark alone when you're around me. I will remember you, no matter what. And no matter what happens. The... Jessica could tell you to kill me for being a, 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 a nautist and 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 I would know, okay? So no matter what you do, no matter what you're made to do, I won't hold it against you, okay? She looks gut punched at that. Like it's it's too much. It's too real. It's too close. And she just kind of covers her hand. I know who you are. Neil, roll me a perception plus empathy. Okay. Uh, what difficulty? Seven. I do not have heightened senses up for this, so the difficulty is still seven. Okay. Does my spec in intuitive count? Yes. That is six successes raw. When she has been speaking to you this through this, this is probably the most hurt you have ever seen her. And that's including her being like, I'm, I'm done with existence. This is the most helpless you have seen her feel. But somehow, some way, when you mention her killing a member of the Quartery, she sinks somehow deeper. Wynne covers her eyes with her hands, elbows propped on her knees toes making fists in the grass desperate to be back where she was hey when yeah what's your birthday august 20th 1940 mhm mm mhm mm and y you know this we've talked i know i just want you to hear it out loud i want you to say it out loud when were you embraced 1969. Woodstock, right? Woodstock, New York. Second day of the festival? Yeah. Yeah. Lex, I'm going to look up at the stars and do something I haven't done in a long time. Okay. I am going to use the things I know about Wynn and this clear night sky, and I am going to read to the best of my ability what lies in Wynn's future. Give me a roll. And I will spend a willpower on this. Five successes. Gazing into the heavens, you see a hand lifting a stone and taking the stone to the skull of one they love most. A tale you are familiar with as an artist. You suspect that when by the almighty powers that rule over her is going to be made to make a sacrifice. And she is going to sacrifice one of the people she loves most. To win all that it looks like. Although she may have seen this him he's, do this he's a, back few, on a his few bullshit. times in the past. He's just standing there back on his bullshit looking mm -hmm. up at the stars. And he kind of puts a hand on his shoulder as he does this. The hand on his shoulder seems to take him back out of it real quick, and he just sits back down on the bench next to her, feet still in the grass, taking a minute, not as 
overwhelmed with information, maybe, as he's been in the past, but he looks at Wynn and just goes, I know now. And knowing is the first step. You need to know you're in the maze to solve it. Okay? And Wynn, I know, I know you can't say anything. I don't even know if you know not to say anything that you don't know. No, believe me, I know. If it's me, it's okay. And if it's not, I'm gonna help you through this. Wynn feels an intrinsic understanding that if she speaks to this in any way, it is going to cause her horrific pain. Does she choose to say anything? As Wynne continues to hesitate, Neil reaffirms and just steps, like stands up, pulls her to her feet, and just wraps her up in a hug, rests the top, like his cheek against the top of her head, and says, you don't have to say anything, okay? All that matters right now is I know. I love you, Wynn. I love you so much. I love you too, Neil. And you're not going wherever you're going without me, okay? I'm not going to hold you to that. Shut up. No more, okay, baby shut, Bjorn. Shut no. Seriously, I... It's... It's okay. It's going to be okay. And even if it's not... On a long enough timeline, everything will be okay. I was literally just going to say it's the end of the world. It might not matter very long. Can we just stay out here a little longer? As long as you need. Okay. And she just, like, settles in against him. Like she means to stay there for a while. Path of Night is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft, the Toreador, was played by Rebecca Segelfest. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Muirhead. Wynn Cabot, the Gangrel, was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Segelfest. This episode edited by Rob Muirhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night Pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcasts, or email us at Path of Night Podcasts at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. Oh no, now Kabir's gonna fight Neil. This'll be a lot closer. I've been gunning to fight Kabir since season <laughs> one. Or two, or whatever the fuck he came back. God, you think I didn't want to fight that man? <laughs> just want that to be the most pathetic fist fight It's ever. just gonna be a slap Nice fight. chemistry, bitch. I've got Auspex. Let's go. <laughs> I'm correct. Does that not protect you against him? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I thought I did. Nope, Auspex does. Auspex, uh, you use Auspex. Oh, well, it can. No, it a... works actually very similar to how it protects you from Obfuscate. Uh, if you have lesser powers, if if his chemistry is less than my Auspex, uh, I can just be like, fuck you, pal. Um, if we have equal levels, it's a roll-off. Hey, if he buddy. has more chemistry than me, no, I can't protect myself at all. It's no, a just a slap fight. <laughs> I don't give a shit. It's yeah. fisticuffs. Johnny gave me a point in Brawl, I could fight him. <laughs> I... Dude, if you hit him with T.I. and he starts trying to sling horde realities while under the effects of T.I., <laughs> everyone fucking loses, but in the best way. <laughs> T.I. is an escalation, though. I'm not against it. <laughs> if we got into, like, an actual fight with Kabir... You're like, actually probably the strongest PC to fight Kabir. Yeah, because I can get past horde reality. Yep, you can beat horde reality. Yep. I got spirit tracking, well, and I can't do that. Or you can do it Weather's way.
Yep. <laughs> <Or> <laughs> you just go first and beat his ass. That's why Johnny's number two. <laughs> Uh, Turns out, if he never gets to go, you don't have to deal with horror. Like Weathers, did you lose her? <laughs> Just use a gun. Now, my first move, if like if Win and Neil, f- or if if Neil and Kabir fought over Win, my first move is be like, your appearance zero now. She's not gonna like you. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what appearance level is Kabir? Because I, I I assumed I, he was like a four. To be totally honest, uh, like I, a three or a four. He's been described as hot carny. Yeah. yeah, so, so like I'm, a I'm four. I'm assuming like a three. <laughs> a European four. Yeah. <laughs> so like the crown's curse. Loser, leave her alone. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. She doesn't want to have your babies. <laughs> Come here, you're like, what the fuck, Neil? What like, are you talking about? Oh, yeah? Show straight. You're ugly, too. Yeah. I didn't change anything. I'm not ugly. You're ugly. <laughs> I failed my him, chemistry role. Him using chemistry just to hurt my feelings. <laughs> Would work. It would work immediately. <laughs> that's, that's what we. I'd be like, I know it's an illusion, night. but it still made me feel bad. No. Chemistry. He says the word chemistry. Yeah. I'm making you ugly. Oh look, I didn't change anything. Oh that's look, no blood. All it takes. <laughs> you spent too much time. I got us. I got a little bud. What's going on? You're a good boy. You dick! I hate you. 